Today we want to talk to you about how the General Assembly makes decisions. You will see in the order of proceedings and in due course in the Assembly paper the agenda for each day. Committees, council, forums and trustee bodies, those are the standing committees, have presented the reports which you've been sent and you'll have seen that at the start there is a list called the proposed deliverance. These are the things that they are asking the Assembly to agree. Some of these will be accepted without further discussion, but for others there will be a debate about the decisions which should be made. So the conduct of debates. Debates are conducted according to standing orders. You should refer to these. They are set out in the back of the order of proceedings. This year, we have also printed immediately after the current standing orders the changes that the Assembly Business Committee proposes to the standing orders since this is to be an online assembly. These changes will be proposed on the Saturday morning and thereafter we anticipate that they will be applied throughout the Assembly. How will we work our way through the process of debating and deciding? This year, the convener's speeches are being recorded in advance and placed on the website. So, when a convener stands up at the Assembly, they will just make a short introduction, say, I present the report and move the deliverance, and then we'll be straight into questions. The deliverance usually consists of several sections. During the time when the deliverance is being taken, Commissioners can make suggestions to change the sections of deliverance, and I'll come on to how you do that. Once we've dealt with all sections of deliverance, either proposed by the Standing Committee or by a Commissioner, the moderator says, the deliverance as a whole, and if no one says anything, it becomes the final decision, and that Standing Committee slot is over. This year, there is also a proposal to fast track some business so that if no request to speak or notice of motion has been registered on the Assembly Hub by the time of the debate, those sections of deliverance will pass without any discussion or voting. I'm going to cover questions and comments. Questions first. You'll see from the standing orders that questions are always in order. That's standing order 45. At this assembly, questions will be called for immediately after the convener has given his or her short introduction and said, I present the report and move the deliverance. That is the best time to ask general questions about that standing committee's report or work. If you want to ask a question, you will need to register a request to speak in advance on the Assembly Hub. The training and short video will show you how to do this. If your question is general, please register it against section one of the deliverance, which is receive the report. If it's a more specific question, please register it against the relevant section of deliverance. If your question concerns a matter within a particular standing committee's remit, but to which no reference is made in the report, Advance notice of your questions should be given to the convener. Please note that questions are for clarification and should be short and to the point. Comments. Again, please register an intention to speak using the Assembly Hub. General comments should be made in relation to Section 1 of the Deliverance, receive the report, and more specific comments should be registered against the particular section of Deliverance. The Assembly makes decisions by agreeing or not agreeing to motions put before it. Most motions are put to the Assembly as sections of deliverance from the standing committees, i.e. the motions that are already set out in the Assembly reports. But these motions can be changed, and such changes can be proposed by commissioners or youth representatives. Notices of motion. It helps everyone if you can give advance notice of your notice of motion. For this assembly, a notice of motion must be given by registering it through the Assembly Hub application. 
Details of how to do that will be shared at the training events and can be seen on the video. One reason for giving advance notice is that the clerks will assist you in framing your motion so that it will achieve what you have in mind. We may be in touch with you when you first register your motion and before it is published on the Hub. Types of motion, and you should give notice of these. First is amendments. That's adding words to or removing words from a section of deliverance, but leaving the basic meaning intact. You can also propose an amendment to another commissioner's amendment. This is known as amending the amendment. Second is counter motions. This is where you're proposing an alternative to an existing proposed section of deliverance, which, if approved, would be distinctly different from the section proposed by the Standing Committee. So the effect is that if your counter motion is accepted by the Assembly, the originally proposed section falls. There can be more than one counter motion, in which case votes are taken amongst the motion and the counter motions. If any one counter motion has an overall majority, then it carries. Otherwise, the one with the fewest votes falls, and we carry on until one has an overall majority. It's also possible to propose an amendment to another commissioner's counter motion. As with other motions, the Assembly will make the choice. The moderator will guide us through these complexities. Third is a new section of deliverance altogether. This adds to the Standing Committee's work or affirms a priority. A new section needs to be added at the appropriate point in the deliverance or at the end, and the clerks can advise on this. The motion needs to fall within that Standing Committee's remit, and for this type of motion, you must give notice in writing in advance to the relevant convener. That's Standing Order 84. Note that you cannot propose a motion to reject a section of deliverance. Instead, if you don't agree with a section, but you don't want to change it or replace it, you should simply speak and encourage a vote against the motion, i.e. suggest the Assembly reject it. Using the Assembly Hub, you would register to speak for when the proposed section of deliverance is taken, and when you're called to speak, you would explain why you encourage a vote against it. The Assembly Hub enables you to indicate that you wish to speak against. The moderator is the final judge of the category into which a motion falls. The procedure for dealing with motions. This is Standing Order 100. Amendments are always dealt with first. Motions and counter motions are polished up with any amendments voted on until there are no further amendments. Then the Assembly can decide between the motion and the counter motions. Take this example. Imagine we are dealing with the report of the Church Hymnaries Trust. It has two sections of deliverance. One is receive the report. Two is instruct the trustees to bring proposals for CH5 to Assembly 2022. On section two, someone might move a counter motion to that. Instruct the trustees to depart from the printed book and develop plans for digital hymn resources only. If that is seconded and then debated, commissions, commissioners would thereafter be invited to vote either for the motion or the counter motion, and whichever one has most votes in favour carries. Now, assuming the motion wins, that is, CH5 is to be a printed resource, someone might suggest a new section three of the deliverance instruct the trustees to retain the purple cover for the printed hymn book CH5. Someone else might suggest an amendment to that. They think the cover should be red, not purple. So their motion is amend the proposed new section three by deleting purple and substituting red. Here there's first a vote for or against the amendment then, depending on the outcome of the first vote, there would be a vote for or against the amended or unamended motion. How you actually go about moving your motion. When the Assembly reaches the appropriate place in the debate for your motion to be moved, 
the moderator will know that you've put forward a notice of motion because it will be visible in the assembly hub. All motions need to be seconded. Other commissioners will be able to see your motion and may note in advance using the assembly hub that they will second your motion. At the time your motion is moved, a check will be made of the assembly hub to see that there is a seconder registered. If no one is willing to second it, then your motion falls. Seconding can be formal, so a seconder does not need to speak in support of a proposal, but if they wish to do so, they should also register a request to speak on the assembly hub. If your motion is seconded, then the moderator will ask you to read what you propose, or the clerks might do this, and the text will be shown on the live feed. The moderator will then invite you to tell the assembly why you believe your proposal is the right one. When moving a motion, you will be given up to five minutes to make your case. There will then be debate at the end of which you will be asked if you wish to say anything else to convince the assembly. After that, the convener presenting the report will be asked to give their response and then the assembly will decide on the matter by voting. Voting. All voting at this assembly will take place using the voting buttons in the assembly hub. We hope that's been helpful and we look forward to being with you at the General Assembly.